gets to know you so well, we can guarantee introductions that will be satisfying and exciting. EH Plus goes far beyond regular online dating sites, and that's a guarantee. Visit us at ehplus.com slash love or call 1-855-930-LOVE. As the owner of a sock shop, there are a few things I can count on during the holidays. No one will know what to get their dad, everyone will decide at the last minute, and they'll decide on socks. And now, thanks to the Postal Service, my customers will know exactly when dad's socks are delivered, which is nice, because it's the only thing the poor guy is going to get. Introducing real-time delivery notifications from the U.S. Postal Service. Now your customers will know right when their packages arrive. Another reason? This is our season. The U.S. Postal Service. Priority, you. U.S. only. Most notifications transmitted within a few minutes of the delivery scan. Consider this your invitation to sell. At buysellmakeoffer.com, you can sell as much as you want for the next 60 days without paying any fees whatsoever. Sound incredible? It is, and it's true. Buysellmakeoffer.com is the new exciting way to sell your stuff online. Make extra money right now. Sell your old car, furniture, video games, household items, clothes, even your home. Sell anything that's legal. Load up your stuff to sell right now at buysellmakeoffer.com. This is your official invitation to get on board to sell your stuff right now free for the next 60 days and once you see how easy it is you'll want to sign up for more because there are no item fees that's right take this opportunity to move items from the other guys and sell it for free you might even win a samsung tablet amazon gift cards and other cool prizes buy sell make is the future of online selling you can use skype to talk to your buyer or seller plus you can use video to showcase your items buy sell make Good afternoon. It's 12.03. I'm Di Rice with the latest in live local news here on KCAA 1050 AM. Sheriff deputies are investigating the death of an infant who was struck by a car outside a Rancho Cucamonga fast food restaurant. The accident happened at about 11.46 Sunday morning in the 11,200 block of 4th Street when a woman was unloading her children and realized the car was still running. The car began to roll backward as the woman attempted to apply the car's brakes but dropped the child in the process. That's when the child was reportedly run over. The young girl was transported to San Antonio Community Hospital in Upland and was later pronounced dead. And another flu season is close at hand and health officials promise an improved vaccine this year. Initial tests point to a much better match between circulating viruses and those found in the vaccine, making the flu shot more effective than last year's, which was rated at only 19%. Two of the season's vaccine components, the influenza A and influenza B strains, have been updated to match the viruses that Californians are likely to encounter. The last flu season was dominated by mutated flu strains that were largely resistant to last year's vaccine. 26 people died of severe influenza in Riverside County during the last season, which generally runs from October through March. Inland Empire weather. Cloudy today, chance of st uh, showers still remaining by Tuesday, becoming mostly sunny and uh, some light winds out there as well. Highs 75, overnight lows tonight about 61. Checking out your drive, the only thing you need to really be concerned about is the 18 up near Big Bear Lake. East and westbound close in both directions between the 38 and uh, Big Bear Vol Boulevard. And uh, that is due to Caltrans work, and they're going to be working in that vicinity until 4 o'clock this afternoon. That is the very latest with news, weather, and traffic on the station that leaves no listener behind. KCAA, 1050 AM. Gary Garver produced the number one radio show for 10 years while Chicka Jones listened on from his jail cell. Now, together. Hey, it's Gary Garver. And Chicka Jones, guru of the ghetto. Check out our show tomorrow morning live, 8 a.m. as we have Dennis Hoff giving us new details on Lamar Odom and what happened at the Love Ranch. Yeah, man, you ain't gonna believe it. Check it out tomorrow live, 8 a.m. on KCAA, 1050 a.m., 106.5 FM. FM. Controlled Chaos. chaos. Hi, I'm Dr. Anissa McNeil. I do the work and I tell the stories of foster youth. Join me Mondays at 3 p.m. on KCAA 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. You can be intentional about your character. 
your work ethic. you got to be on the same page. Today we're calling to let you know we are debt-free, house and everything. You have done really, really, really good. And you're not going to quit now. It's been a huge witness for us to be able to share that. It was time to get serious. Intentionality, people. <laughs> success. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. This is your show, America. If I knew at 22 what I know now, our life would be better off. It's the show that's changing the world. Now you don't just listen to the show, you live it. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Dave Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is your show, America. Thank you for joining us. Open phones this hour at 888-825-5225. Gerald starts off this hour in Los Angeles. Hi, Gerald. How are you? Uh, hi, Dave. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it. Sure. Um, my question is uh, regarding my grandmother down in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, she has dementia, and she lives with her sister, which is my aunt. Mm -hmm. um, but her home, which is vacant right now, the home is underneath uh, my grandmother's name and my aunt, mm -hmm. and my aunt is deceased. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get a uh, title, get on the title for my grandmother's home. I currently have power of attorney, um, and I wasn't sure the best way to go about that. Why, are, why are you supposed to be getting on the title? Um, to rent the home out and just to make sure I have control over the home. You do if you have power of attorney. You do? Yeah, you can rent it out if you have power of attorney. But you're all doing that. You're doing all of this for the good of your grandmother. Is what you're supposed to be doing. That's right. Because the home is vacant, the insurance policy that's on the home is a homeowner as an owner occupied. The vacant home policy, insurance policies is, uh, is pretty expensive. You're gonna, Not yeah. looking to. Yeah, you need to get it rented and get a new policy put on it. And the power of attorney gives you the power to do all of that. Okay. Even, so even course, get, now, what happened to your aunt's estate? Uh. The one that nothing, died. Nothing in particular. Just went through probate. Not, nothing. Well, I mean, who inherited her half of the house? That's a good question. Because if you want to do something with it, ultimately, you've got to have that entity sign for on her behalf. Now, if your grandmother was, did you, did your aunt predecease your grandmother? Your grandmother's still alive. Okay. So, uh, That's right. And so um, was was your grandmother possibly your aunt's only heir? Yes, at the time, because I'm here in California. That's right. No, no. Where you're located doesn't make you an heir or not. Um, it's bloodline. If there's no will, did it, your aunt have a will? No. Okay. Then um, the state of Georgia, when they probated that uh, will, which is where the lady was living, I assume, when she passed, uh, would dictate who got who inherited her half. I'm hoping... So your aunt, that was her mother, right? Your your grandmother's her mother. That's right. Okay. Did she have? Did your aunt have any brothers or sisters? She does. One sister, which is out here in California, which is my mother. Mm -hmm. Um. But the the. Does she home, have any kids? Uh, three kids. So my mother, oh, which Jesus. is here in California, the aunt that's deceased, and another son. No, did the aunt, also, the aunt have kids? Yes. Oh, Lord. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have trouble getting rid of this house uh, unless you get some kind of a ruling from the probate court as to your aunt's half, who signs on, who signs off for that. But in the meantime, you're not trying to get rid of it. You're just trying to get it rented, and the power of attorney will give you the power to do that. Okay. But in order to sell the house, you could sign on behalf of your grandmother with the power of attorney, but who signs on behalf of your aunt's estate would be her heir's and that, my friend, is what's known as a nightmare with what you just described to me. I see. What's the house okay. worth? Uh, I think about forty, fifty thousand. Oh, not Lord. much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not much. So the heirs to your aunt's half of the house would have to sign off and receive their portion, and that has to probably be determined by a court if it wasn't in the probate. 
I see. Okay. If her estate was probated, the court may have already done it. So what I would do is, um, you got any contacts in, in Atlanta that could run by the probate court uh, or an attorney over there that you've worked with that did the power of attorney or something that could run by the probate court and pick up the file on your aunt? Uh, not really. I travel back and forth to take my grandmother to doctor visits and things like that. Okay, so you could, you could run. That. Make a trip down to the courthouse in the county that she was living in, your aunt, that probated the, the will or probated the estate. There wasn't a will. And see if there's a file, and if in that file, if the judge determined the heirs and what was to happen to the dispersal of her estate. Okay? I see. And if not, you may have to actually hire an attorney, and it may cost a couple thousand dollars to get right. that portion straightened out someday when you get ready to sell this property. Does your grandmother have a will? Uh, she does, but it needs to be updated. That was also our... It can't be you. updated. She has dementia. Right. Okay. You can't... You Power of attorney, you can't use to update a will. <laughs> so uh, that is okay. her that is her will whatever it is and uh so when she dies that in combination with your aunt's death is going to be the barrel of fish hooks that you get to untangle uh this is a rubik's cube okay uh sure. in, in order to get this little forty five thousand dollar house sold but um but I, I would go ahead and start on it now since you've been willing to take on the job, and uh, next time you're over there, pull the probate file and see if you can get that unraveled and then put those heirs in combination with your grandmother's heirs upon her passing and have a plan for this house because you don't want to be handling it 10 years from now still on the behalf of a whole bunch of people that are just, you know, you're, you're, you became the property manager by default. That would not be a long-term plan for this. But for today, rent it. Get the insurance turned over, and you can use power of attorney to do all that. Good question. Kim is with us in Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, Kim. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm well. How are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Excellent. I have a question about borrowing money, your favorite topic, to <laughs> mediate quickly. So hopefully you can answer my question fast. I'll try. I'll try. We have a home um, here in Omaha that we need to sell. We're relocating to another area of the country, and we're wondering if we need to borrow money to fix up some of the features on it to sell it at a better price. Mm. What needs to be fixed up? The roof, um, some exterior paint, um, possibly just some modifications like some carpeting in the basement area and some concrete work. What, what's it worth after it's fixed? After it's fixed, we might be able to sell it after we fixed everything you know, a little over 200 If we don't, then we're going to probably sell it in the 180 range. I'll just sell it. You just sell it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because what you described to me, you're getting ready to spend 12, 14 grand anyway. Yes. In order to get 20 more, just yes. sell it. Just sell it as is. If you can get 180 for it versus 200 Okay. I wouldn't go to all that trouble for five grand. I. I Thank you for your input. I do appreciate it. Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate you joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Folks, I am so excited about Chris Hogan's new book, Retire Inspired. We have got it on sale now, pre-order. It comes out January the 11th. It's an incredible book showing you how to live your dream at retirement. And retirement's not necessarily 65. You need to start thinking about this when you're 25 or 55. Retirement's not an old people thing. It's a smart people thing. If you order right now, you get a $20 book. Why would you order a $20 book in advance, this far in advance? Because we're going to give you $70 worth of stuff included. That includes the ebook, the digital audio book, a video called Investing Basics, a retirement budgeting guide, and my ebook, The Legacy Journey. All of that. Some of it comes now. Some of it comes in January when the book comes. But $70 worth of stuff for nineteen ninety nine. Check it out at DaveRamsey.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Anissa McNeil. I do the work and I tell the stories of foster youth. Join me Mondays at 3 p.m. on KCAA 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. The Rancho Cucamonga Chamber of Commerce's 19th Annual Vintner's Dinner Celebration takes place Friday evening, November 13th at the Ontario Convention Center. The evening will feature great restaurants, caterers, and wineries of the area, a silent auction, and live music. This will be the event of the year. Reservations are required. Contact the Chamber at 909-987-1012, 909-987-1012, or ranchochamber.org. 
Jerry Carver produced the number one radio show for 10 years while Jigga Jones listened on from his jail cell. Now, together. Hey, it's Gary Garver. And Jigga Jones, guru of the ghetto. Check out our show tomorrow morning live, 8 a.m. as we have Dennis Hoff giving us new details on Lamar Odom and what happened at the Love Ranch. Yeah, man, you ain't gonna believe it. Check it out tomorrow live, 8 a.m. on KCAA, 1050 a.m., 106.5 FM. FM. Partner, Howard Russell, who is the CEO and president of Christian Healthcare Ministries. Howard, it works. It's affordable for followers of Christ. This is, in fact, an actual ministry. It's not just a word in the title of your organization. There's a wonderful model that members in all 50 states, they pay a monthly membership fee. If they have medical bills, they send those bills into us. We send the money to the member who then goes pays the bills. That model works because it finds its basis in the Bible in Acts chapters 2 and 4. That's what we do, and we are legal, plus we are more affordable. You can go to chministries.org. That's chministries.org. And on their website, you can get every answer that you could possibly ever need, and you can communicate with their amazing team. So check it out now, chministries.org. We found the problem with your car. Um. Turns out the uh, carburetor differential modulator is out. What? And while we were digging around in there, this thing fell off. Stop. There's no automotive repair nightmares at Diego Martinez's Five Star Automotive in San Bernardino. Five Star Automotive, where you'll get a great experience and home of the $15.99 oil change. That's right, just $15.99. They specialize in transmissions, brake repair, AC, and many other repairs, all with a lifetime warranty on parts and labor. Diego knows when your auto needs five-star attention, it's never convenient. He offers a 12-month interest fee auto repair loan on major auto repairs with no money down. He even throw in free towing and a 10% discount for his neighbors in the 909 who work for the city and county of San Bernardino. Call 909-387-0770. That's 387-0770. Your neighbors at 909 West 2nd Street in San Bernardino. Here's your Money Minute with Market Wrap host, Mo Ansari. If you follow the markets, you've probably been getting seasick lately. But what if I told you that market volatility can be a good thing? If you're a bargain hunter, this is your coupon. So keep your shopping list handy. If you're a long-term investor with plenty of time before retirement, the money going into your 401k each month will buy more shares when the markets are down. And if you have a good financial plan, you can relax while others worry because that plan will carry you beyond today's headlines. Of course, you should should always consider professional guidance before making any financial decisions. That's your Money Minute. I'm Mo Ansari. For more tips on investing during market volatility and other investment topics, listen to Market Wrap weekdays at 5 p.m. on this station. For a free consultation with Mo Ansari, call 800-388-9700. That's 800-388-9700. Compact Asset Management is a registered investment advisor. Funds custodian, Fidelity Institutional Wealth Services, member FINRA SIPC. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda at 106.5 FM K293 CF Marino Valley. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, Timothy and Jennifer are with us. <laughs> hey, guys, how are you? We're good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Where do you all live? Uh, Osceola, Indiana, just outside South Bend. Oh, fun. Very cool. And here to do a debt-free scream in Nashville. Yes, we are. Yes. Yep. I love it. And how much have you paid off? A little over 20000 in about six, just over six months. Very good. Making what kind of money? About 72000 Okay. Excellent. What kind of debt? Uh, a little bit of everything, Dave. About uh, 11000 on a car loan, a couple thousand on a credit card, some medical debt, and some finance phones and stuff like that. Just all the little stuff. Very cool. So uh, you were kind of normal. Pretty much, yeah. And you knocked it all out in six months. Yep. Tell me the story. What happened? Um, well, Jen's parents have helped us out quite a bit. Their, uh, her grandparents were into finan- uh, investing quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So... Um, 
about last year, probably about a year ago or so, mm-hmm. uh, they were able to sell the grandparents' house and help pay off Jen's student loans. Oh, wow. Yeah. So most of them. We had a little bit yeah. left that was in our debt snowball as well. Mm-hmm. And then come fast forward to this year, Jen's dad decided to give us um, some money for Christmas with the intent that we open Roth IRAs. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what a Roth IRA was. <laughs> <laughs> so I got online, started doing some research and looking it up and praying about it. been going to church recently and stuff. Mm-hmm. And up on the all video screen. They were doing some growth groups. We were going to do a young married couple one, but your name was up there as well. Mm. So it said Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover Group. I'm like, well, maybe that guy knows something about money. I didn't know what to do. So went home, looked up the audio book, downloaded that and started listening to it and was hooked ever since. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So Jen, what happened when this guy decided he was interested in money all of a sudden with you? Um, it was a rough start. <laughs> I kind of came I'm, home and did the thing of, well, we need yeah. to do get out of debt. We need to do this, this, and this. And she was, no. Nah. I'm very detail-oriented, not the big picture. That's his side of life. Mm-hmm. So it took me a little while to really be able to see it trickle down into the details in our day-to-day. Mm-hmm. I knew the difference that would make in the end. My grandfather, his birthday, would have been, he would have been 95 today, who had oh, started wow. the whole family on investment. He had lived through the Depression knew what it was like to save money and play the stock market. So I knew that once we got going, we could have their style of life. They retired young mm-hmm. and were really able to enjoy it. And that was my big picture. That's all I had. He had the rest of the big picture. <laughs> mm, okay. So you had a family that modeled uh, yes. frugality and investing for mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Yes. And so in a sense, you're kind of glad he got on board of this home money thing, but then he was doing it wrong. <laughs> a little bit. As far as how you felt about yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah. It took okay. me a little bit to let go of the credit card and to really buy into cash. And now when I go shopping and I don't have cash, I kind of feel funny. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So uh, you guys, you did the Total Money Makeover audio book audio together? Book, yep. Well, I kind of listened to it first and uh-huh. I came home and I did the thing, of course, like I said, just we need to get out of debt. But mm-hmm. once we started talking about um, what we wanted to accomplish and stuff, then she got more on board with mm-hmm. that. And her parents live about an hour away, so we'd get in the car and drive out there and I'd just kind of plug in your... Uh, different radio shows and the audio book and kind of mm-hmm. get her to listen to it. So after a while, okay. she started coming around. So, so Jen, your mom and dad had to be watching going, okay, this guy you married starting to grow a brain. He's starting to think about money. Yes. <laughs> they they got to be pretty proud. They are. So, yes. they are. Yeah, that's that's why we drug them down here with us today. <laughs> oh, okay, they're with you to yes, say they are. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. Okay, as it should be. Yep. <laughs> that's good because they're, well, your dad, grandpa's birthday today is what a great way to celebrate. Yes. Definitely. I mean, that's just wonderful because I'm sure he's smiling. We yes, so, definitely. Yes. No question about it. Looking at his little Jen, and there yes. she is. <laughs> I love it. That's fun. All right, Timothy and Jennifer, South Bend, Indiana, paid off twenty thousand dollars in six months, making seventy-two thousand a year. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Okay. Three, Three, two, two one. one. We're debt-free. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Great job, great job, great job. Man. Open phones this hour at 888 825 You jump in, we'll talk. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Start the process of updating your home for the holidays with new sample packs from Blinds.com. That includes the best sellers, the modern fixes, patterns and textures, and more. Lots of ideas. And the sample packs are all free. It just helps you figure out what you want to do with the blinds for your windows. Blinds.com. Great company. Josh in Michigan gives us our question. I'm hoping to become a partner in a large accounting firm. As part of the agreement, there is a $200,000 buy-in. The firm will finance it and withhold payments from my salary for a few years. Should I do that or save up and pay for it in cash? Um... Well, I, I don't believe in debt, Josh, and so it would be wrong for me to teach you to go into debt. Um, the uh, I would save up and pay for it in cash, and even then, I'm a little bit hesitant uh, as to what you're getting for $200,000. What happens if you leave the firm with the $200,000, your portion of the partnership? Is there a buyout in return, plus or minus? Um and, um, you know, what rights do you have as a partner in a large accounting firm as, a, as the buy-in? Um, that's a heavy investment, and, and to have a minority interest and not have control of the environment. They can do all kinds of things you don't agree with because you're a minority. You can't outvote them. You don't have a 51% ownership position. 
$100,000 is a lot of money to not be in control. Uh, I'm not a fan much. I'm really not. I think it's a good chance. I mean, if you had an extra 200000 laying around, that's one thing. But if that's your entire investment world, is your partnership share in this accounting firm, and you don't have control of what's going on, even if you pay cash, that scares me, honestly. There's a lot of bad stories could be told. There's a lot of good ones can be told. A lot of good things can happen. But um, you really need to learn what your rights are in your worst case scenarios there. Again, open phones here at 888 825 You jump in and we will talk. Uh, Jason's in Salt Lake City. Hi, Jason. How are you? Great. Thanks, Dave, for taking my call. Sure. How can I help? Yeah, I've got a question about financial planning and debt. I'm a newer listener, but I'm familiar with your baby steps. I'm seeing if you would suggest a different way to go about my financial planning or if I'm an exemption to the rule or, or special in any way. Um, my wife and I are 32. We've been married for two years with a baby on the way. We have no debt until two months ago when I started dental school, and then the debt drastically rose. So it's 80000 a year for dental school. And so I'm looking at four years of that for $320,000, including the interest. My wife makes about 60000 a year, um, and we'd like for her to not work once I'm out of school because um, we'll probably have a couple or a few kids by then. And so I'm kind of I'm kind of questioning about how do I go about, obviously, you know, we're going to try to attack this as quick as possible. Hopefully I'm thinking six to eight years to be out of debt if I was to be just an associate just working for um, somebody else. But I'd really like the option of owning a, my own private practice down the road because the pay is average about double with a lot more risk, I know. So it's even kind of what you think and if while I'm working off the debt, if I was to start something you know, my own or to buy a practice while I'm working off that debt. Well, you're pretty convinced using debt is a great way to live. And I'm not um, because of the way you asked the question. And so uh, uh, what you're outlining for me scares the crap out of me. Uh, yeah. And so what I, what I would tell you to do is at a minimum, the, the very minimum you ought to do is work like a crazy person and she works like a crazy person and clear the debt as fast as you can after you graduate and don't go in debt to buy a practice. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. You find another way to get into a practice. You work into the back door, you know, you get, you share the profits that would have been there for a few years with the guy and let it, and you let those profits buy him out. But you don't need to go, you know, you're going to go from 320,000 in debt to another 460 in debt and you're going to spend your whole freaking life paying back debts in order to be a dentist. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're outlining for me $700,000 worth, $800,000 worth of debt here uh, in order to get to be a dentist making 100500 dollars 200 a year. I, it doesn't make sense. So you need a different plan than that that involves getting out of debt quickly and permanently and finding another way to get into a practice ownership position. Um, otherwise, I think you're really going to be miserable. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Christina KCAA Loma Linda at 106.5 FM K293 CF Marino Valley. Join Michelle Skeen for Relationships 2.0. This week, her guest will be best-selling author Robert Moss of Sidewalk Oracles playing with sign, symbol, and synchronicity in everyday life. Moss will help you learn how to trust your feelings to bring enchantment into your everyday life. Don't miss Relationships 2.0 this Tuesday at 3 p.m. on KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. We found the problem with your car. Um, Turns out the uh, carburetor differential modulator is out. What? And while we were digging around in there, this thing fell off. Stop. There's no automotive repair nightmares at Diego Martinez's Five Star Automotive in San Bernardino. Five Star Automotive, where you'll get a great experience and home of the $15.99 oil change. That's right, just $15.99. They specialize in transmissions, brake repair, AC, and many other repairs, all with a lifetime warranty on parts and labor. Diego knows when your auto needs five-star attention, it's never convenient. He offers a 12-month interest fee auto repair loan on major auto repairs with no money down. He even throw in free towing and a 10% discount for his neighbors in the 909 who work for the city and county of San Bernardino. Call 909 387 
387-0770. That's 387-0770. Your neighbors at 909 West 2nd Street in San Bernardino. California headline news, an unscheduled landing for a Southwest Airlines flight en route from L.A. to San Francisco. Hey, uh, flight attendant just called. Evidently, we've got two passengers that are in a physical altercation, so we need to get turned around and back to LAX. According to witnesses, a male passenger got upset when a female in front of him reclined her chair, but he allegedly put his hands around her neck. The plane landed back in LA. He was taken off the plane and detained by authorities. The woman wasn't seriously hurt. Residents in areas like Antelope Valley still stunned by the damage done by last week's massive storm. You just got to think about what you can do this hour, this moment, this day and then move on from there. Homeowner Crystal Johnson, hundreds left stranded when roadways filled with mud and debris, many cars still buried, a big stretch of roadway still closed. Former Lakers and Clippers star Lamar Odom making steady progress at a hospital in Vegas. Reports say Odom has been able to get out of his bed with assistance and sit in a chair. Geico weather temperatures in the 70s around the state. Slight chance for more rain in Southern California today. Jeff Scott, California News. Geico presents 15 things to see and do in California. The 1.7 mile long Golden Gate Bridge connects San Francisco to California's northern counties. Since opening in 1937 with its tremendous towers, sweeping cables, and orange color, it has become one of the most beloved bridges in the world. With more than 10 million annual visitors, be ready for crowds. That's one of 15 things to see and do in California. Brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call 1-800-947-AUTO or visit Geico the Smarter Way to Manage Business Expenses, presented by Concur. After my conference, I checked out of the hotel, and the bill was automatically added to my expense report. Then I hopped into a taxi. I snapped a photo of the receipt using Concur, and bam, there it was on my expense report. Then I used my corporate card to buy the client's lunch. Another charge added to my expense report. Expense reports that write themselves. Just one of the many ways Concur helps manage your company's spend so you can focus on the big picture. Take a free test drive today at tryconcur.com. K-C-A-A If you're trying to prevent home foreclosure, you need a law firm with extensive experience representing clients in protecting their homes from foreclosure. The Goodman Law Firm is a nationwide team of mortgage mitigation attorneys that provides legal advice and expertise you can trust. Our nationwide network includes local of counsel foreclosure attorneys to represent you during the mortgage mitigation process. The Goodman Firm has represented homeowners across the nation in resolving their troubled mortgages. We have the experience and the knowledge you can count on to best represent your interests. The banks have attorneys fighting to protect their interests, and so should you. Call the Goodman Law Firm at 888-800-6030. Take control of your mortgage situation today. Contact us at 888-800-6030 or through our website at arnoldgoodmanlaw.com. What have I learned so far? I've learned that dropping out of high school was my decision. But as a single mom, that decision affected more than just me. To set an example, I had to be the example. I found a free high school diploma program at Learn for Life that fits around my busy life. I have a team of teachers, tutors, and counselors that really care. I learn at my pace in an environment that is safe and comfortable. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one -on -one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. Gary Garver produced the number one radio show for 10 years while Chicka Jones listened on from his jail cell. Now, together. Hey, it's Gary Garver. And Chicka Jones, guru of the ghetto. Check out our show tomorrow morning live, 8 a.m. as we have Dennis Hoff giving us new details on Lamar Odom and what happened at the Love Ranch. Yeah, man, you ain't gonna believe it. Check it out tomorrow, live, 8 a.m. on KCAA, 1050 a.m., 106.5 FM. FM. Controlled Chaos.
Joining me for a couple of segments, we're going to talk about kids and money. You got questions about kids and money. Rachel Cruz is with me here for a little while. My co-author of the number one New York Times bestselling book, Smart Money, Smart Kids. Also happens to be my daughter and the mother of one of my grandkids. So there you go. That completely qualifies her for all of this. So we're going to talk about kids and money if you want to talk. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Our producer's cleaning off the uh, phone lines to open up just for kids and money calls right now. The phone number, 888 So whether you have a little one or a 23-year-old you can't get out of the house, we'll talk anywhere in between. Uh, jump in and we'll talk kids and money. 888 Welcome back, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me back on. Well, we're both back fresh off of the SMART conference. Speaking of Smart Money, Smart Kids, and you spoke uh, not about Smart Money, Smart Kids, but about money and some of the stuff you're working on for a new book that you're starting to put together, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, I did the money portion of the SMART conference, which was a big deal considering it was a Dave Ramsey event and he did a different talk at the end. So I took the money portion, uh, which is actually really exciting. So yeah, I am working on a new book uh, that tentatively will be out next fall. And uh, a big part of it is just what I'm seeing around what, how, what I feel myself when it comes to money and what I feel like other people are seeing. And so much of this comparison thing is such a is such a huge part of how we handle our money. And so a big portion of my talk, which was titled blank the Joneses. So you have to fill in that blank is what I told the audience, whether that's delete the Joneses, unfollow the Joneses, forget the Jones, whatever it is, you have to get the Joneses out of your mind because they're probably broke. And if you're trying to follow their lifestyle, you'll probably end up broke as well. Because you know, comparison will deaden, the road of comparison will always deaden with debt because well, you'll that- spend money that you don't have. Like you say, to impress people you don't really like. So mm-hmm. getting yourself under control and finding your priorities in the life you want to live. And, you know, we run into that not only with ourselves, but that, that does kind of segue into the subject of smart money, smart kids. Um, parents, it, it's almost as if they're kid has to be dressed a certain way or their kid has to be handling money a certain way or their kid has to be given an allowance or the kid has to be there's money subjects around people comparing and keeping up as well isn't there oh my gosh absolutely and baby being a gap. new mom and baby I, gap that's yeah, what and it I, right there and i get it though like and as a new mom that's the thing is I, as i see these women i'm like no i get it like i understand wanting to go into baby gap and cash out your retirement and just buy everything in sight, right? I mean, like there's so many great things. And and so I get that idea of, of you want to give your kids the best, yes, but also you're integrated with Facebook and Instagram and you see what everyone else has and what you feel like, you know, you need to make your life. And so uh, I understand that pressure for sure. But again, um, doing what's best for you and your family. And part of that is telling yourself no, telling your kids no, uh, teaching them boundaries and limits with money. And so all of these things, if you can ingrain that in them early, that foundation that's built is huge for them. Yeah, because the kid will use comparison to try to keep you from doing anything. You know, little Johnny doesn't, Johnny down the street doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to give money. He we never have to did that money. to you guys growing up, did no, we? <laughs> no, you never brought up what other kids do, to which we always said, you know, you know, the standard federally issued parenting line is well if little johnny jumped off a cliff would you you know that's a that's a yeah. federal that's a federal mandate that parents are allowed to say that line mm-hmm. but um you know we're just because other people do it doesn't mean we have to do it we don't let them set our value system we set our value system and out of that then we make our decisions and our, our beliefs determine our actions that way and that certainly includes teaching your kids so we wrote this book smart money smart kids it comes out a year ago april so it's 18 months old yeah. it debuts number one on the times at the time you were taking the position i took the position as the dad that raised a money smart kid and as an adult you were taking the position i'm the kid that was raised that way and now here's how i turned out and so here's how i viewed it growing up and now looking back how i view it but now another thing has happened little amelia is born a year after the book comes out so now as a mom how has that changed your perspective on this money smart kid thing yeah, I would say um, after having a baby, I, f- I I feel more of a weight than I thought I would with the responsibility of raising 
a human being in today's culture. And I, I feel like I understand the fight that parents have. And I don't fully understand because she's six months old. But you start to see the uphill battle you have as a parent in today's culture. So many negative things that are out there that are against you almost, um, or the values you know I have. And so I've realized, you know, with her and money, I'm like, gosh, I, there are so many things I want to do. And I'll be honest, I think... You know, because I was born the year we filed bankruptcy. So I got to see you guys in your pain coming out of it, you know, early memories um, of, you know, living in that tiny house and, and, and driving, and, you know, being driv- driven to school in nasty old cars with the foam coming out of the back seat, right? I mean, like we kind of experienced the bottom of it uh, and walked with you guys through your success. But but thankfully she's born into a, into a house where Winston and I were not perfect with money, but we have been able to do it right. And, you know, we still... Um, have to live within our means and all of that. But, um, you know, we've been able to be debt free and things like that. So I feel like we're in a different starting position. So it makes me with her want to take an even stricter approach and make her maybe work harder and pay for even more things. And like we did 401 Dave and you matched our car growing up. And a part of me wants to be like, I'm sorry, you have to pay for the whole car. Like, (laughs) I feel like I'm going to like overcorrect the opposite way and make her do more than you even guys made us. Just yeah. to protect that, because it yeah, is, you, you, you get nervous. I remember when we were writing the book, there was a, um, I, I wrote one chapter, and you and some of the people in content, we got in a big argument in the writing meeting, because uh, I used a lot of war language. This is a war. It's a battle, and you have to fight and claw and scratch, and they're like, these are little children, don't say war. <laughs> it was you for know, contentment. But, you know, but it is, yes. but it yeah. is a war, and, yeah. and you're, that's what you're saying. You realize that even more now. Yes. Yes, it's like you feel that protection. You are in battle for your child. I mean, yeah, you feel that You're fighting for your kid to have some sense in, yes. a, in a cr- world gone crazy. Yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, children are always watching what we do. What are some of the things you're doing today to encourage people to teach your kids to give? Um, for the parent, I guess is what you're asking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yes, I mean things. I mean, I would say, gosh, in, in the subject of giving as a parent. At all money, I like to say that more is caught than taught, but that's especially true with giving. I mean, if you're not giving yourself, your kids are not seeing that example. And I know that's one thing you did so well. Um, as parents, you guys brought us kids in to your giving. And that was that was huge. Not only do we experience giving with our own allowance, you know, I think it was like a dollar a week, but the big things that you guys did, we came along and got to experience that as well. Yeah, you get to participate and feel the emotions of it. The book is Smart Money, Smart Kids, Teaching Kids How to Handle Money. Number one New York Times bestseller with Rachel Cruz, my daughter, and me. And now it's a class, and it's an amazing class. It's a really, really good class. It's six lesson video based study where Rachel and I show parents how to teach their kids about money, about hard work, about responsibility, about patience, about gratitude, about contentment. And if it doesn't you know, if it it doesn't matter whether you got a toddler or a teenager, you can start wherever you are, and you can teach them to be more successful adults. Maybe you didn't teach them other things in their life, but you can start at any point. And these lessons are fun; they're easy. Most of them are taught by Rachel. I'm in a few of them, and um, you're going to love this material. It's called Smart Money, Smart Kids. Go to Smart Money, Smart Kids and get the membership. And you can either take a class with a, a group of people, or you can do it as an at-home class. Either one. Smart Money, Smart Kids, the class, and uh, you can just check it out. Smart Money, Smart Kids dot com or Dave Ram- com or call customer care at triple eight twenty two piece triple eight two two seven three two two three. What was your favorite part of putting that class together? The class? Oh gosh. I think diving deep into the age appropriate activities. We talk, we talk we give parents really specific things to do depending on the age of their child and I think that's great because so many parents want those practical tools for their kid at their age specifically and we give that to them. Little known inside baseball behind the scenes thing. Rachel was pregnant and no one knew it except us, except me. And, yes. and she was having morning sickness while we were doing the video shoot. So <laughs> not good. Yeah. You won't you won't see it. It's all edited out, I promise. <laughs> but a little known fact there about the Smart Money Smart Kids class. Now, back with your questions about kids and money right here on The Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, I'm Dr. Anissa McNeil. I do the work, and I tell the stories of foster youth. Join me Mondays at 3 p.m. on KCAA 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. 
Gather your friends, your golf buddies, your church group, the people in your office, even the ones you don't like. October 24th is the date for this year's Ontario Airport plane pull for the USO. Travelers Aid of the Inland Empire and Baldyview ROP also benefit. Be there Saturday morning, October 24th at the Old Terminal 1, Vineyard Avenue and Airport Drive. Bring the family. The Ontario plane pull is presented by Ontario International Airport and the Friends of Ontario Airport. Major sponsorship includes Los Angeles World Airports and KCAA 1050. AM. One of the most overlooked priorities in a family's financial plan is life insurance. Having it and having the right amount are crucial. If you died, how would your family pay the bills, put food on the table, and plan for the future? Term life insurance is protection for the ones you love. It's not complicated and it's not expensive. People need to deal with this, which is why I found a company I trust and I do business with, Xander. Please take the time to take care of your family. This is KCAA. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company has been serving the greater Inland Empire for over 60 years. For all of your printing needs, from full color printing to high speed copying and everything in between, go to Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. Their staff is committed to your total satisfaction. Great service isn't just lip service at Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. It's the way they do business year after year. Having trouble finding drafting supplies? Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company still carries a complete selection. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company is rated high in customer satisfaction by Value Star, an independent rating company. For all of your personal or business printing, call Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company at 909-792-3478. That's 792-3478 or visit them on New York Street in Redlands off the I-10 and the Crosstown Freeway. What have I learned so far? I've learned that there is no one path right for everyone. I've learned that without my high school diploma, I can only do so much. My options were limited. I found a free personalized learning program with Learn for Life that has a flexible schedule so I could keep my job while earning my high school diploma. I found new career training opportunities that would jumpstart my future. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one -on -one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. Join Michelle Skeen for Relationships 2.0. This week, her guest will be best-selling author Robert Moss of Sidewalk Oracles playing with sign, symbol, and synchronicity in everyday life. Moss will help you learn how to trust your feelings to bring enchantment into your everyday life. Don't miss Relationships 2.0 this Tuesday at 3 p.m. on KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. Rachel Cruz, my guest this half hour, author of the number one New York Times bestselling book, Smart Money, Smart Kids, along with me, her proud dad. Uh, she'll be speaking again with me this weekend in Denver at the SMART Conference. It's a day-long conference with the top parenting, top marriage, top people on boundaries. Um, that's uh, Meg Meeker on parenting, uh, on boundaries, Dr. Henry Cloud, Dr. Les Parrott. Absolutely killed it this weekend talking about marriage. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Rachel will be speaking on money and the comparison trap that she was talking about a few minutes ago. And, uh, of course, I'll be there speaking. Chris Hogan will be there speaking on retirement. Christy Wright, Chris Brown. It's a day-long conference, and you would pay this ticket price to see any one of these speakers. A single one of these people in one location for that price would be a good deal, but you get them all 
for one really, really great price. And there's a few tickets left, not a bunch. Uh, last weekend in Phoenix was an absolute blowout. It was a sellout. Thank you, Phoenix. Uh, and there's tickets left for this coming Saturday in Denver. So we hope you guys line up to make it. And don't forget the Smart Money Smart Kids class I was telling you about before the break that Rachel and I have out teaching you on a home study basis or joining a class with others. You can get it at smartmoneysmartkids.com. So taking some questions from parents about their kiddos. We'll start with Chris in Texas. Hey, Chris, your question for Rachel and me. Yes, sir. Good to finally talk to you. I've been listening to you for a long time. I um, I have a five-year-old daughter, and I'm starting to kind of get her to do responsibilities, but earning things around the house like chores, picking up after herself, you know, things like that, and to where she can make, you know, a little bit of amount. In other words, so that she works for something, that way she can learn um, the value of work. I understand it's an early age, but, you know, I believe get them going early. But where do you do the fine line on teaching it to where they're actually learning responsibility compared to just chasing after the money and not learning responsibility? Hmm. Rachel? Well, I would say as you're teaching them work, I think they're learning responsibility. I think, you know, as she has to complete a chore, whether that's, you know, um, picking up after herself or feeding the dog, whatever it is, you know, she has to learn that that's what she has to do. And the money is just the result of that. And, and so I believe as her having to complete a chore and she's responsible for doing that each week or each day, that, that in essence, I believe is teaching her responsibility over, over days and weeks and years of that. We is have, there something we, not to do in doing this that could end up making it go the wrong way? No, I don't think so. Um, okay. I, I think if you make it too money-oriented, then you just raise a little union negotiator, you know? <laughs> so we don't want everything to be about the money. So we had we had really three types of chores you did. Some you did for money, and we had the kids on commission, not allowance. You get paid, you do the, if you do the work, you don't get paid if you don't do the work. Uh, the second kind of chore was just chores that uh, were kind of a family project. We all jumped in and cleaned out the basement one morning, or that kind of a thing, whatever was and the third kind of chore was just some things you do around the house because you're part of the dadgum family and we let you live here and um, those are kind of responsibility chores in other words uh, we didn't pay our kids for taking their dishes to the dishwasher they did that because they love their mother and it was an act of love that she cooked dinner for them and it's an act of love that they help her clean up uh, and so we had different things that were some things you were doing as an act of love as a part of the family that teaches them to be good citizens in a community then the money one we want to pay on on some things because then we create teachable moments from their work work equals money you like you said earlier that was a good point chris you need to learn that and then once they've got that money in their hand you've got three more things you get to teach them and that's with the money that they quote unquote earned you can teach them to give some of it to save some of it and to spend some of it and we broke that up into three little envelopes i'm going to send you a copy i'm going to send you one of our financial peace junior kits that's, uh -huh. got, that's got all the stuff in it to put the chore board on the refrigerator. It's got the three envelopes in it, the give, save, spend, and, and a little instruction book in there, and it'll show you exactly what to do. I'll give it to you as a gift, and hold on, I'll have Laura pick up, and we'll ship that to you, and it'll show you exactly how to do a lot of those things. Regina is with us in Las Vegas. Hi, Regina. How are you? Dave, I am absolutely wonderful now that I have you on the line. Well, how can we help? Well, good afternoon to both you and Rachel. Um, I am a mother of three. Thank you for the five the five year old in, information. But now I'm concentrating on my other sons. Um, I have a son who's 23 and 19. Um, both are um, in my book extremely intelligent and extremely well versed. Um, but my oldest son is in cru accruing debt. He went and leased a car. Um, and he is a mechanic, so unfortunately, somebody has convinced him that he has to have all these newest, latest, greatest tools, um, and then he went on and bought the newest, latest, greatest, and the best of. So, unfortunately, he's incurred debt not only with the car, but also with the tools. Okay. Does he, li does he now, live at home? Uh, he does not. He actually lives on his own. He lives with a girlfriend, mm -hmm. um, and she's wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. But they both have cars, and they both have tremendous debt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm trying to get them on the right path. But as a mom, it's hard to say, mom says, mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. how that works, I'm sure, as a dad. It doesn't work once they're on their own. You, no, you can no, you can no longer use your mother voice. Mom. 
Yeah, you can't use your mother voice anymore. I've got three grown kids, and I can't use my daddy voice anymore. It just doesn't work. They just look at me. Exactly. And, so. you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to be that new relationship mom, but it's hard because I'm really trying to tell them what I'm doing as far as my debt snowball and share that with them. But sharing it, it still comes out as the mom voice. Let's take it from the kid's perspective in that situation, the grown children that's kind of an oxymoron if you will but um uh you know out there well i've got i've got one i've got one it's a child of mine who is now grown so that's it's not an oxymoron but so rachel what would you how would you tell that mom to speak because i'm sitting here i'm your dad how would you tell that mom to speak to a grown son who's making some mistakes yeah, well, I think first, if he's not willing to listen, then then that's an uphill battle. Obviously, you wish that he was seeking your advice because that's an obviously much easier conversation. But I would, yeah, like you said earlier, you can't use your mom voice. And so to go in and just say, hey, you know, maybe even just, maybe I don't know how you raised him when it comes to money, but just saying, you know, first off, I wish that I had taught you this stuff earlier because I believe your life is going to be so much easier if you take this step. And let me show you what it's doing to me. Like you said, you talked to him about your debt snowball uh, and just say that this is what I'm doing and I hope you guys can get on board. Maybe here's some tools for you all. And and I even would suggest letting, if, you, if you're able to get a copy of the Total Money Makeover, letting Dave be the voice that teaches them how to handle money maybe. Sometimes so, through a third party, mm-hmm. that's easier to hear than from your own mom. So, Regina, what, what I practice doing now, and I don't always do it, and Rachel will testify to the fact that I don't always do it, but what I try to practice with our kids, all three of our kids are out of the house. They all live on their own. They all pay their own bills. And, and so they're adults. They have the right to be stupid. It's not illegal. And so what I practice with them is I try to treat them when I see something like I would treat a, a friend of mine, not one of my kids. And so what if one of my friends was doing something that was dumb? And you got to change your, that changes your voice and it changes your words that you use. And so you, how, you, know, you, Regina, I've got some friends that are stupid. Do you have any stupid friends? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, treat your treat your twenty three year old like he's one of your stupid friends, because you got you got to tre- use a different tact. You don't use your mom voice with them, and you don't use mom language with them. Uh, when it's your friend, you have to persuade them, and you have to be gentle, and you have to be diplomatic, and you have to reach somehow down into their heart and hook them. And you say, listen, you know, and a good way to do that with your friends slash twenty three year old is to say, hey, here's some dumb things I've done in the past, and I made this mistake and this mistake and this mistake, and then I started doing these other things, and, man, it feels so good to be out of debt. And, man, it fe- I, I, was, I felt so bad when I was in debt I couldn't breathe. I felt stressed all the time. It affected my relationship with my husband. And you just talk about you. And what it felt like then when you got free. And, you know, one of the things that helped me do this was this class, Financial Peace University. And you know what? I, if you ever wanted to go to that class, I'd pay for it for you because it just changed my life. It rocked my world or whatever. And then you just let me do all the talking by getting them into the class and you pay for it. But don't go, you're stupid with money. You're an idiot. And if you keep doing this, you're going to wreck your life. And I'm going to pay for this class so you don't wreck your life. That's not going to work. I totally agree with you, Dave, and and there's a little caveat here that I need to add to this. You know, both of them, um, they lost their dad about six months ago, and it was devastating to both of them. And I think that's also drawing... Then you can use that. You can use that, too. You can say, hey, when I was hurting, I wanted to medicate with spending. And I don't don't know about you, but it made me feel better kind of when I spent. But then I got myself into a mess. And I don't, you know, I worry about somebody else I know, wink, wink, doing that. So that's how I would get at it. Rachel, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Rachel Cruz this weekend at the Smart Conference and SmartMoneySmartKids.com. Gary Garver produced the number one radio show for 10 years while Chicka Jones listened on from his jail cell. Now, together. Hey, it's Gary Garver. And Chicka Jones, guru of the ghetto. Check out our show tomorrow morning live, 8 a.m. as we have Dennis Hoff giving us